Hello friends, uh, today I want to discuss in media res. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, there are a couple of online uh, pronunciation guides. Something like in media res, <laughs> sounds like Rachel Ghoul, probably the same root word. Don't know, not great with Latin. <coughs> we usually just use the, the phrase in media, which you can pronounce in English. So this is uh, the technique of starting a story in the middle of the action. So starting in with no preamble, starting, uh, the best example is in movies, uh, there's certainly one of the examples, is the opening of Star Wars. Uh, so episode four, I guess, uh, <coughs> where you, you start in and you get the, the ship flying overhead and there's a battle going on and it just starts. So there's no discussion of where they are, what they're doing. There's, there's no, other than that crawl at the beginning, uh, you just see two of the main characters going down a hallway and the people are, are uh, firing blasters at one another and then Darth shows up. Uh, <coughs> so this drags you right in because you're immediately wondering what's going on. Uh, you're invested in the characters that you see. You see R2 and uh, 3PO right away and you have a connection to them because, you know, what are they doing? Uh, they seem very alarmed. I hope they'll be okay. All good. Uh, so this same technique can be applied to role-playing games. <coughs> it's uh, I've used it in improv on stage. Uh, it gets you past things, which is why it's so useful. So example, in a uh, on stage in a improv scene, instead of actually uh, walking up to another character and establishing through dialogue who you are and where you are, and then building and building and building until you get to action. You can begin with an action. Um, there was a scene I started with a, a friend where uh, they walked up and slapped me. And instead of walking up and saying, uh, hey, Dr. Thompson, you know, establishing that I'm a doctor of some kind, then we have to build what our relationship is, but we're there, I got slapped. Uh, there was an immediate action. There was an investment between those two characters. The audience was very interested, and it turned into a great scene. <clears throat> the same thing can happen in a role-playing game. So instead of starting with uh, beginning in an inn, and you have to talk through what's where you're going, why you're there, uh, what the problem is, what your conflict is, <clears throat> you can actually begin right out of the box. Um, I've used this from time to time, and uh, I used it more often at first when I was experimenting with it uh, for convention games. In a convention game you have a very limited amount of time in a very narrow context to build interest and investment and get everybody um, on board with playing a game that they're um, engaging with. It's your main um, enemy, uh, time, being efficient with your time. So in media goes past some of that building levels, building interest. Uh, you can shortcut and go right to it. The first time I saw this used in a role-playing game uh, context was the West End Games version <coughs> of the uh, Star Wars role-playing game. It actually discusses it as a, as a tool and uh, tried that when it was suggested and uh, works. So in, an, in a role-playing game to use in media. Uh, you want to get everybody set up, have them sit down, and then begin with something. Uh, I'm very fond of everyone make a saving throw. Uh, very few statements, certainly in Dungeons and Dragons, that have, there are few statements that have more power than make a saving throw, right? Um, <coughs> it's one of the most uh, high-impact things that you can say. Uh, everybody is immediately invested because, geez, saving throw, what could happen if I fail, right? So uh, that will bring people in. Uh, the other thing I've done is I have had everybody roll a certain number of dice, and then they take that much damage. <coughs> so I will often weight the dice depending on what rank they often fall into in a combat sense. So the frontline fighters, I'll, I'll give them, you know, say out of the blue, like four six-headed dice. They take that much. Back rank maybe takes three, and if you have a protected rank, 
Maybe they only take one or two because the whole point of the other ranks is to keep them safe. Um, don't explain, just have them take the damage. Because that immediately begs the question, oh shit, where do we take the damage from? What's going on, right? Um, so, when doing this, a couple of things you make, need to make sure to do. <coughs> make sure that the group doesn't immediately put the brakes on something that's power is derived from acceleration of plot. What I mean by that is player characters, have players being what they are, have a tendency to uh, question everything often in unproductive ways because their character means a lot to them. So they have a lot. They're not playing at the $5 blackjack table. They're playing at the $50 blackjack table. Their stakes are always very high for a, a player that cares about the game. So one example is we used to use this as a joke all the time. <coughs> one of the campaigns I ran for years and years and years, um, I remember at one point I tried a, a technique like this and I started the session by saying, um, you've been arrested and uh, you're in jail for six months. And that was meant to be a lead-in. Now there are going to be important characters in the prison, escape, adventure begins. <clears throat> one of the players immediately speaks up and says, okay, day one. And he's got this whole list of things to do um, to try to avoid the setup. And so from that point onward, anytime somebody tried to uh, do what would be a transition in the movie, they, they would, we'd always just say, day one. You can avoid that reflex, one, if you have the, the inherent trust of your group. That's pretty important. You know, if, if they know you're not going to just screw them to screw them if they do something wrong, but they trust you as a narrator and a storyteller, and they'll go along with uh, setups and twists, you have a lot more latitude in what you can do and how you can do it. If you don't have that, you'll need to protect yourself a little bit. So you'll need to do things like make sure you establish uh, things like what spells people typically have memorized. Uh, they'll need to have like a general set of spells <clears throat> so that their first question isn't, well, what did I think I was doing this day? And they want to go in and rememorize their spells. Make sure they have a default. Um, have some standards that you have for things like marching order. Uh, does your group what weapons do you have out? What do you have? For, you know, what weapons are ready if you're walking down a road? That way, if your immediate setup is, you're going to get ambushed. <clears throat> Rather than having to set up for that ambush, having those things decided ahead of time, you've already done the setup that you'll need. The more you know about your your adventuring group, the less will be questioned because you've established it already. And this is also. You know, kind of an improper rule as well as establish, 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 right? So you want to be able to take the throttle and pull back and launch right into an initial encounter. As long as you're in the right position to hit that throttle, you'll be fine. Uh, you may, the first couple of times you try this with a group, uh, you may need to talk down the uh, panic <coughs> that some people are going to feel and uh, let them know, okay, just roll with this, you know, let's move forward, and, uh, you know, there's a story coming, trust me. So the, the next thing I'd warn about is um, make sure if they've given you that trust and you launch in that way, uh, make sure that it leads somewhere interesting, right? Because you, you've taken the, uh, you know, using the metaphor of the throttle, you know, you just went from zero to 60 in, in uh, two seconds. Well, where are you headed? So if it's just some meaningless combat that doesn't connect to anything or, or meaningless encounter, it's, um, I think, frustrating to the players because you have forced them to engage. You've forced them to connect, and then you've connected them to nothing weak sauce at, at best, right? So if you begin a game by saying, you're at the King's Masquerade, what are your costumes? Well, that can be either lame and pointless, 
or a launching pad for a very interesting scenario that they then have to find out, well, why are we here? Don't make them go investigate to find out the answers. Use in media to start, but then in the example of the masquerade, make sure that fairly shortly after a little dancing, maybe a couple of reform roles or something, <coughs> their contact in the rebellion comes dancing up. You know, good, we are glad to see that you're here. Ah, oh, you're dressed as a fox. Fitting, given our plan. Give them something to connect to. Give them a reward for playing, a role, playing along with you. So, hopefully that'll help. It's worth trying. I'd love to hear what, uh, what result you have. One warning, like any technique, anything that feels like a trick, uh, don't use it too often. Because instead of it being the spice that adds something to a game, it becomes uh, lame, frankly. You don't want to start, unless it's part of a genre, like I can picture parting, starting, excuse me, starting every pulp game. If you have a setting that's uh, uh, kind of a Doc Samson, something like that, you could theoretically make structure your game in a way that uh, every game starts with the reverse of a cliffhanger. Yeah. So we open the game and you're hurtling along in your car and uh, up ahead uh, there's a team of horses running away and the man you're chasing is on the black one in the lead. What do you do? Generally, just pull this out every so often just to liven things up, get them invested, grab them, and take them someplace cool. Great. Great. May all your saves be 20s.